Hey guys, John here, and today I'm going to be showing you how I paint the Epic Battles American Civil War Confederate Infantry from Warlord Games. Now, a little note I want to make before we go any further is that this is a tabletop standard tutorial, meaning I'm not going to be doing anything fancy, I'm just going to show you how I actually paint my models to get them out onto the table in a timely manner. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and move on to the rest of the tutorial. To start, I'm going to base my soldiers with Uniform Gray from Army Painter. I went ahead and used an airbrush to make this easier, but a brush works just fine too. I just won't be showing that. I like to start by getting their boots painted. For this, I'm going to use some black from Model Color. I begin painting by just picking out the shoes on one side and then moving on to the other. I don't like circling the models around in my hand. Don't worry about being too messy and getting it on their little base. We're going to be painting over that later anyway. Once you're done painting those, you should end up with something that looks like this. Next, we're going to pick out some of their pants with Electric Blue from Army Painter. I just choose some random guys in the line, they don't have to be in any particular order, just to add some variation. Again, I always start with the front side of the strip, and then move to the back. Now we've got their pants painted, it's time to add some more variation. We're going to use XV88 from Citadel to do the butternut uniforms that the Confederates wore. So again, I'm just going to pick out a few guys in no particular order. I usually try to avoid doing the guys with the kepi hats because it looks weird to have a butternut uniform and a gray kepi hat. I apply this stuff pretty liberally because I want to make sure all the gray is covered. Alright, we've got those guys all painted up. Next up, we're going to do the rifles with Oak Brown from the Army Painter line. I like to start by doing the tops and main bodies of the rifles, and then moving on to the bottoms where they're holding them in their hands. Of course, I always like to start from the front and move on to the back. It's just easier with these strips. So when you're done, you should end up with something like this. Now we're going to be painting their straps, bags, canteens, and bedrolls with black. You can vary these up, but in order to get them out, I like to just use one color. I think it looks just as good. So I'm going to start painting the straps by using a fine point brush and being a little careful, because getting black on a lighter color like this uniform gray is a bit harder to cover up. So I've painted the front, and as you can see, I've made mistakes, but that's okay, because we will cover them up later. Now to move on to the back. Okay, so we've got all the uh, straps, bedrolls, canteens, and that sort of thing painted. Um, you can see there's a few mistakes, and I went over the lines a little bit, but it'll all mostly get covered up later, so don't worry about it too much. Next, we're going to use Kislev Flesh from Citadel to paint their faces and hands. So I typically like to start by painting the faces first. You don't have to do it that way, but I just find it easier. Try not to spill over onto the kepi hats, it's a little hard to cover up.
Then I move on to the hands. And they're really small, so I take a light touch with the brush. But I find it pretty easy to cover these up, actually. There we go. So next, I want to move up to their hair and take care of all those. I like to vary it up, so I use three different colors. Demonic Yellow from Army Painter, Mournfang Brown from Citadel, and Leather Brown from Army Painter. You can use whatever hair colors you like to use, but I just had these on hand and I think they make nice different hair colors. So I pick a few out in no particular order, the same way I did with the pants and other variations. So, now we've got all of our hair and beards painted. I think I accidentally lost the footage of me painting the beards, but I followed the same strategy. So, with all that painted, now we're going to move on to the gun barrels using gunmetal from Army Painter. I like to dry brush it on, meaning I don't mix water or anything with the paint. So I just take the tip of the brush to the paint and begin lightly applying it to all the metal sections of the guns. Cool, our barrels are painted. Next, we're gonna take some greedy gold from Army Painter and do all the belt buckles and knife tips. I like to take a thin, very small amount of paint to the edge of the brush and just lightly tap it onto the details. You really don't want to spill over here. It's going to be hard to cover up. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to take some black from Model Color and paint their hats. I chose black for the hats because they're actually cavalry hats that the infantry just picked up in war during this period of the Civil War. Try not to spill over onto the rifles, it's going to be really hard to cover that up if you do. Sweet, we've got our hats painted. Now for this step, we're going to touch up all of the mistakes that we've made during this whole process. So as you can see, there's some black on their blue pants there, and then on the other side I have a few places where I've spilled over as well, like on the gray areas of their pants. We're just going to touch all of that up. So I've touched up all the mistakes I've made. There still might be very, very tiny ones, but in this next part of the process, we're gonna cover those up. So I find it easier to do this next part if I actually go ahead and glue the strips on. I've been working on another strip of them so I can complete the base using the same process I did on this one in the video. Cool, we've got those guys glued on, and we're ready to move to the next step. So for this step, we're going to be taking some leather brown from Army Painter, or just any brown that is going to look like our basing material, and begin covering up the ground part of the strip. Just covering it up so that we get all the black and can blend it in easier with the ground texture. Don't worry if you get it on the base. All right, we've got our ground strips painted should look something like this. Now, for my basing material, I use the thick mud from Vallejo Acrylics. I really like it and I think it's easy to blend in. So I take a tool, you can use any flat edge tool, and begin blending it in with the edge of where I've painted the ground strips. I try not to get too much on their pants or feet, but it's okay, I think it looks cool seeing as how they wouldn't be completely clean, they'd have dirt on their clothes. Awesome, our basing material is now on. Should look something like this, don't worry if it's uneven, we're gonna do more stuff to it, it's no big deal. So for this next part of the process, and this is very important, we're gonna take Agrax Earthshade from the Citadel line and lather those boys up. 
And I mean lather those boys up. This brush is chock full of this stuff. Get a very thick coat on and make sure everything is covered in it. I mean seriously. Get their hats, get their backs, get their guns, all of it. Don't leave anything uncovered. So we've got all of our shading on, but since we've used so much, it has a tendency to pull up between their legs. We want to take the brush with it being dry and just kind of soak some of it up so that it doesn't pull up and make anything look weird. All right, these guys are all dry and it's time to begin the final part of our process. I'm going to be putting some grass on the base. So for this, I've chosen Battlefield Field Grass from Army Painter. I think it makes a really nice grass for miniatures. So to do this, we're going to take some watered down PVA glue to use as our base so that the grass will stick. I'm actually using Elmer's glue for this. Just apply a thin coat to the top of the base and try to get it as even as possible. But if you can't, it's no big deal, it doesn't matter too much. We've got the glue on our base, and I use my fingers to apply the grass. I take some, pinch it, and break it up, and just drop it over the base. Although, you can use an applicator, or whatever you find useful to do this. Anything will get the job done. So just get that grass on there. Voila! We've got a finished miniature. And boom! There we go, finished miniatures, ready to hit the table. Something you may want to do is apply a protective coat with something like matte varnish, but other than that, they're ready to go. I try to keep my processes really simple and easy to do so that it doesn't take too much time and I can just get them ready to get playing. But I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.